Hi, welcome back to the Love Luxury YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about Birkin 25s in exotic leathers. I've got three here beside me and we're going to give them a brief rundown and then you can tell me which one is your favourite. Don't forget to hit subscribe, like and comment. So I've got three Birkin 25s beside me and they are all exotic skins. Now, the three of them look different and the obvious difference is the colours. So this one is Beton with gold hardware. This one is Vanille with gold hardware, which is vanilla. And then we have Noir Black with Palladium hardware. Now, other than the obvious, which is the colour difference, there's also two different finishes here. So we have matte, these two are matte finish. This one is Lise, which is a high gloss finish. So other than the obvious, which is colours and finish, these three bags come in two different leathers. So this one here is a crocodile nihiliticus, whereas these two are alligator. Now, crocodiles grow to be much bigger than alligators do. And it's said that the scales on an alligator is much smaller than the scales on a crocodile. However, I'm going to show you that this one here is alligator and you can see it has fairly large scales centrally and then it goes out to much smaller scales on the outer edges there. So you can see that for yourself. And that is the same for this vanilla bag also. So we have larger scales along the center and then much smaller scales on the outer edges. Let's compare those two to this one. This is the crocodile which is supposed to have larger scales but you can clearly see that the scales are much smaller. But the difference is that on the other ones they're much larger across the center. So the spine that runs down the middle Either side, the scales are much larger, whereas on this one, they seem to be more uniform. And although these ones are slightly bigger, these ones are not that much difference in size. So the difference, I would say, from my experience, is that the crocodile, the Nihiliticus crocodile, so this is a freshwater crocodile, has quite similar size scales, but there's another difference. Can you spot it? Can you see that difference there? Can you see these little dots? You only get that on a crocodile. You don't see that on an alligator. So I'll just show you another uh, the alligator again, so the Beton alligator, and I'll just bring that close. And you can see that there are no dots there. Those are called pores, and they don't exist on an alligator. So. When you're looking at bags, most places won't let you open them for very good reason. These bags are brand new, these two bags. They're spanking new, fresh from the store. We have full stickers on both. So we don't want to be opening the bags and showing people the insides and the stamps because one, we would take the stickers off over time. They would come off, they'd come loose. But also every time we open a bag, we're creating what seems like use. So you're creating folds, you're creating wear. If the bag stays closed, we don't get any of that. So when a bag is in our store, for example, we never open it. If it's box fresh, we don't open it for anybody because the inside of the bag is perfect. There's nothing to see. So just saying you've bought your bag and you're looking at the inside of the bag. Now, there are markers that tell you which skin is which. So for these two that are Mississippiensis leather alligators, there is a square. So there's a very tiny square next to the Hermes Paris stamp. Whereas with this one, the saltwater Nihiliticus crocodile, there's a dot, two dots. So square, two dots. You also get the chevron pointing upwards and there are other markers as well. But for these bags that we're talking about here, both of these have got a square inside next to the Hermes Paris stamp. And this one has two dots next to the Hermes Paris stamp. 
Alligator is considered a far more superior leather than crocodile and the reason for that is one because they grow a lot smaller but also because the amount that are born and grow to full size is a lot less than crocodiles. So there are more crocodiles readily available to be made into bags, shoes, belts, whatever, than there are alligators. So that's one reason why they're more expensive. But also alligator is a lot softer. It has a more buttery finish. It's absolutely stunning. And what's so special about these two bags is the matte finish. Now the matte finish is created with a wool and it's much harder to get this matte finish than it is to get the shiny lisse finish that is achieved with an agate stone. So another very interesting fact about these skins is that alligators have more symmetrical scales. So when I was talking earlier, I talked about the spine. The spine is the central part. Don't forget that this leather would come from the underbelly of the creature and the spine would run down the middle. It's kind of like a belly button, but they come from eggs, obviously, so they don't have a belly button. So that's the central point of the creature that runs down the middle. We call it a spine. Now, we already discussed that the squares, the scales, are larger close to the spine and as they get further away they get smaller but the alligator in comparison to the crocodile the scales are far more symmetrical this gives a much more pleasing look and finish to the bag it has been said that the more symmetrical these scales are the higher price tag the bag is worth. And you can understand why people are perfectionists. They want a bag that looks perfect side to side like a butterfly. And some people that collect these bags are very specific about how the scales look on the bag. So we've talked about the fact that alligator is probably a more preferred leather. What's also interesting, we said, is that the alligators don't grow as large as the crocodiles, which means that larger bags tend to be made from crocodile rather than alligator, just simply because the creatures are so much bigger and therefore larger items can be made from them. Now, we've discussed that the I feel that this is a, a more superior leather, it's softer, the scales are flatter, they're more symmetrical. However, Hermes prefer this leather, the Nihiliticus crocodile, to craft their Birkin or Kelly Himalayans from. I don't know why they choose the crocodile over the alligator. I don't have a clue as to what the reason would be for them to choose to make it from crocodile rather than alligator. If somebody knows the answer, drop a comment down below. So we've talked about how beautiful these skins are and how rare they are and the difference between the alligator and the crocodile. And while I was doing my research for the video, I was thinking to myself, so Hermes choose to make the Himalayan bags from Nihiliticus crocodile. And why would they not go for alligator? It's smoother, the scales are flatter, it's a superior leather. And then I realized the reason they choose a Nihiliticus crocodile is because they actually choose an albino Nihiliticus crocodile. The reason being, it's hard to get the color out of a standard crocodile. So they have to use the albino crocodiles because they need to draw as much pigment out as possible before they put on the cray or the green pearl colors over the top. And that is why they choose the Nihiliticus crocodile over the alligator. So I have a clear favorite of these three bags and it's because that particular color is a color that I have loved 
ever since my Hermes journey began. I wonder if you can guess which bag it is. And why don't you tell me which is your favorite of the three? Because I know that choice in color, in finish, is so important and very individual to people. I really hope you've enjoyed the video today and don't forget to hit subscribe, like and comment.